Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and iOS 11.3 has just been released. With it comes a whole lot of new features, so we're going to go ahead and tackle them one by one, showing you everything big and small that has changed inside of Apple's latest update. Starting with one of the more prominent new features, we have four new Animoji for users on the iPhone X. Obviously, Animoji use that true depth camera system, which you can see there at the top, freaking out with the IR projector and IR camera, reading my face and mapping it onto the Animojis here. Of the four new ones, we have the lion, we have the dragon, we have the skull, and we have the bear. They are all very expressive. I think my favorite though is, is definitely the dragon. It's probably the most crafty looking of all of the four, but it is always nice to see Apple doubling down and introducing new features and new content for Animoji. Also related to messages is business chat. So instead of having to open a weird browser window or do something in an app when you're trying to reach technical support or customer support for something, you can actually do all that right here within messages and it makes it really easy to do things like complete a purchase. So if I wanna to talk to Apple or Wells Fargo or some of the other companies that have launched with business chat, you can actually just do all that right here in messages, it makes it really easy, you don't have to worry about keeping windows open and all of that. It is really, really awesome and I'm excited to see more companies adopt it. For users of older phones, we finally have that battery health feature. It is launching inside of a beta, but in, if you go into settings, dive down into battery, and inside of battery details, you'll actually see this little beta option for battery health. It'll show you your battery's current capacity as well as their peak performance capacity. If your battery gets degraded enough and accidentally shuts down, it'll turn on throttling, which you can come in here and turn that off if you so choose. It'll also give you a little warning that your battery health is poor, and then an authorized service representative will be able to replace that battery and restore your phone to full performance. We've seen Apple invest a lot into health, and we can see that with the new feature for the health app, which is health records. Basically, instead of getting your test results back in some sort of email or my chart, some other platform, you can actually get all those health records sent right here into your health app. So it can kind of congregate all of your data from different sources and just makes it into one easy to access location. Of course, it has to be part of an existing network that is working with Apple on this. There are lots in here. When you go into the health records app, it'll automatically kind of pull in ones that support it that are in your like local vicinity. But it's a really cool feature and I can't wait for more to take advantage of it. We're also getting the release of ARKit 1.5 inside of iOS 11.3. There's a few big differences, including the resolution bumping up to 1080p by default. And now instead of just being stuck on horizontal planes, like you see with carrot weather here, it'll now work vertically. So it can detect walls, everything like that. So you could put like artwork right up on your wall through AR and it's really cool. So I can't wait to see more of this in the future. We saw a little bit of it during Apple's education keynote event. Music videos have been brought into Apple Music here. It makes it really easy just to play all of those straight from the music app. Just go into browse, there's a new section for music videos. There's also a bunch of exclusive ones that Apple's been kind of promoting, like this one here from Allison Brie and Beck. It's a pretty neat experience and you can actually just go ahead and leave Apple Music and this will still play in the background just like it was a song instead of a video. Speaking of videos, inside of the news app, it's easier to stay up to date with recent news by watching the new Apple video section. So going down in news a little bit, depending on the day, I guess it goes down a little bit further, but there's a new today's video section that highlights the best news videos from that day. Videos have always been in the news app, but now they've been just kind of congregated together into the top news section. We've also seen Volti support added for Vodafone contract customers there in the UK and AML, so advanced mobile location for sending your data to emergency services when you're making a call from an iPhone. If you were a HomeKit user, you were really going to like this because it's going to mean a whole lot more HomeKit products hitting the market. And that is now support for software authentication for HomeKit devices. Previously in the past, you actually had a piece of hardware from Apple in your HomeKit device. Now they can all be done through software, which should make it a whole lot easier for manufacturers to create devices and get them to market. There have been a ton of small little changes here in the App Store. First up, if you're looking at updates, you can now actually see the size of the update coming in. Just tap on that little more button on the right hand side, you'll see the version number and the size of that download. It makes it really easy to see what will and won't download over cellular and just how much data you could be using to download that update. For those on the iPhone 10, there's a little bit of a clarification, I guess, when you're going ahead and making a purchase or a download. Basically, it'll just say confirm with side button down at the bottom. Some people just didn't happen to notice that on the top right hand side of your phone, there was that little alert saying double click to install. So that was still there, it's like double click to install, double click to purchase, but that was still up there, but people weren't necessarily seeing it, so they just made a little bit more clear what was going on. 
If you're looking at your purchases by tapping on your little account, going to my purchases, and in this case, for family sharing, I have multiple there, but you now actually see the original downloaded date for any app that you had purchased in the past. So if I scroll all the way down here to the bottom, I can see eBay, PayPal, Facebook, ones I downloaded way back in 2008, 10 years ago. I'm not sure how often I'm needing that information, but it's kind of nice that it's there. And the one last update for the App Store is you can now actually sort your App Store review. So it just makes it easier to kind of get a good idea of an app before making a rather large purchase. You can see here on Simpsons tapped out, you can see just what the general reviews are overall, but tapping into viewing more, viewing all, you can sort by most helpful, most favorable, most critical, and most recent. As a minor change, the App Store also got a nice little splash page when you open it for the first time after installing the update. There's actually been quite a few different things around privacy change in the latest ones, with some new splash screens uh, showing up here and there in different apps. We also saw in settings, these, uh, the privacy icon has been changed. It was more gray, now it is a new blue privacy icon. So not any real changes in the privacy policies or how it works, but just trying to make it more clear when people are using your information and adding some new logos and changing a couple icons. For those who use the podcast app, it's now quicker and easier than ever to get into playing a podcast. Just a simple tap now will immediately start playing where you left off. It is pretty handy and there's a few other changes with hyperlinks within the app itself as well. And lastly, aside from the many bug fixes that have been implemented, the animation is back in the calculator app. You can see when you tap on a number, there's a slow fade animation as the button kind of comes back up. That was removed in the last update when they fixed another problem in the calculator app, and now the animation is returned in iOS 11.3. So there you have it. That is everything new inside of iOS 11.3. Make sure you let us know if you find anything else down below in the comments. Until next time, this has been Andrew for Apple Insider. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.